You've been down this road for far too long. He left your love behind. But still you what are the beginner mistakes, the things these guys should, they think they should do? You see guys doing, but they're actually the wrong thing to do. Time bomb. You only get so much time to pour it and finish it. So. Your tears they say a thousand words. I've heard them all before. All right, so we got a lot going on in this job site. We're pouring a new apron and a new set of concrete stairs, right, Ron? Right. All right, all right, guys. This is my buddy Ron Graff from Concrete Arts. We worked together for how many how many years now, Ron? Lots, probably. Well, probably over 25, 30 years. Damn it, that makes us old. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Older anyway. All right, so you've got the everything excavated out. The soil um, you're going to be hauling away. No organic material goes beneath any concrete ever, right? I mean, that's my Usually rule of not. thumb. I mean, it's what's underneath it besides what you put over it, so. But uh, we get rid of all the vegetation and the grass. Yep. The top topsoil, basically. Yeah. So I'm going to jump in here because what you do beneath the concrete is going to have a major impact on how well your concrete performs long term. You don't want to put your concrete on organic materials in any way, shape, or form. You want to have some base preparation made. And what we're looking at here is this is what's called a class five base. This makes great material, but let's talk about the depth that you need. So if you're gonna have just a residential light traffic load, you're gonna want about four inches of base material over your raw soil. Again, non-organic material, but still raw soil. Four inches of class five, 57 stone. Anything that will be compactable is excellent material for beneath a uh, sidewalk. Now, if you have a heavier traffic load and you're gonna be bumping up and maybe going into a driveway area, you can stick with the four inches, but then I'd recommend maybe going up to six inches for a typical driveway like you see behind me. Now, in extreme cases where semis and you're gonna have a heavy traffic load, then you're gonna bump that up to six, eight, even 12 inches if you're in loading docks or loading ramps or things like that. The base will impact how well your concrete performs long-term. Yep, now uh, you've brought in recycled class five in this case, right? Yep. yep. I'm good. Sure. I'm good. Yep. Thanks. <coughs> so, recycled class five, just so these guys know. I just swallowed a bug <coughs> right down my throat instantly. That was not fun. All right. So, <laughs> recycled class five has three quarter inch material plus fines in it. And it's made from old chunks of asphalt and concrete and it packs up like new concrete it's just it's it's an amazing material we have it locally i don't know if you guys have it in your neck of the woods or not but we use that underneath uh all new slabs you can also use just standard three quarter <coughs> with minus i think i feel it squirming in the back of my throat <laughs> all right so what if what are you using to reinforce this concrete with ron um wire mesh six by six by 1.4 gauge wire mesh and that's this stuff right here. Now this is for the apron. You use different material for a set of steps, right? Typically use some rebar reinforcing in the steps. Would you use rebar in this area too? Sometimes we do, yeah. It all depends on the application and how wide it is. I mean, the re uh, wire mesh usually comes in five foot width. So if it's usually under you know, five feet, we like to put you know, rebar in there instead. So. Yeah, and if you've got a heavier load. So when Ron talks about application, I think you're talking about the load that the concrete's gonna be experiencing in the span that it's gotta hold. Is that right, or am I wrong? Yep. Yep. Okay, so that all makes sense. So the forms, do you ever use a release agent on the forms? Um, usually on the steps, the uh, sidewalk forms, we usually don't. Okay, I mean, why is that? Under four inches, it, it usually breaks away pretty good once it sets up and you just tap along it. Um, and we don't usually, sometimes don't strip these until the concrete's set up or the next day, so it breaks away pretty easy. The steps are a different story because we gotta strip the face of them and rub them out. So we kinda want to put some type of oil or some type of, you know, 
release in there so the concrete doesn't stick to the form. Did so. diesel fuel work? We do use that. It's not uh, recommended though, you know, just because environment -y. Say if we got a, um, some release called bubblegum release. Okay. Sometimes we'll do, uh, we use uh, um, Pam cooking spray a lot oil because we do a lot of pool decks. So we spray that around the coping so the concrete don't stick to it. Oh, release it pretty easy, yep. tricks of the trade, right? Yeah, tricks of the trade. You awesome. Okay. So um, do you order the mix in a different in a different uh is it weight or slurry or anything when you do steps to aprons yeah usually about a four or five slump for sidewalks okay um, steps are usually around a three or four i mean depending on what we're pouring there but usually around a four slump on an average now you're doing both today and a lot of these guys may be doing both yeah so which slurry are you using because well, i'm guessing you're coming not... as a five slump usually for the sidewalks and so we're gonna see how that looks when it gets on the site, because typically it's a little stiffer after sitting in the truck, so we'll probably pour the steps first. It'll probably be at about a four slump by the time it comes here. We unload. Um, if it's too wet, we'll just come over to the sidewalk and start pouring this first. So that's what I want these guys to know. So if you're going to be doing steps and an apron together, you got to do the steps first, right? Usually, yeah. Yep. Usually, typically. Yep, because that has to, you've got this, it's got to be a thicker slump for that. Yeah, a little heavier, a little not as loose. And you can actually pour water back into it to loosen it up a little bit, or do you recommend right. against that? No, you put put water in it. I mean, you usually got to put water in in it as you pour if it's you know setting up in the truck. We, can you take us over to show us what we're doing on the other right. side? You know I mean? All right, Ron, I got another question for you. It's not like I don't have enough of them, right? Yeah. What are the beginner mistakes? The things these guys should they think they should do? You see guys doing, but they're actually the wrong thing to do. As far as pouring concrete? Yes. For the beginner thing, um, it looks easy, but it isn't. So, I mean, you only get, when you get a load of concrete, it's like a time bomb. You only get so much time to pour it and finish it. So, you gotta move fast and you gotta stay ahead of it. Once it starts getting hard, if you don't have all your edges and cuts in it, then you got problems and the job's not gonna look very good. You know, at the end, you gotta struggle with it. Okay. Um, what so about? Say for the homeowner, we, uh, we use it a lot in the summertime. We use uh, um, a retarder in the concrete, and that, that will help you give you a little more time to work with the concrete before it starts getting hard on it. How about fiberglass reinforcement, Ron? I mean, when I when we poured concrete, when I've done it, I get it with fiberglass reinforcement already built in, and that's actually yeah. fiberglass material in the concrete. Right. Yay or nay, or not really effective? Yeah, it's or... fiber. It is. Um, they have microfibers, which you don't see too much of. Um, once it's down, we use a lot of microfibers for a, a smooth finished concrete. They have just a regular fibers that actually are thick and look like horse hairs, but the problem is with those, you've been on an application, because you see a lot of those in the, uh, the finish once you broom it. So we don't typically use a lot of, you know, um, fiber mesh. for you Ron what are the tools these guys need before they start to do an apron or a sidewalk like this or something like that tools they need before they start yeah so um, they're they're going out and trying this for the very first time and they're at the store and they're like oh hey I need this 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 and this I mean I see what you need well, but you need picks, shovels uh, forming <coughs> tools you need you know usually typically a hammer some stakes forming material 
Um, depending on if you're using screws or nails, you know, you need a screw gun or otherwise just a hammer, a good hammer, and a, that's about a three pound sludge hammer to pound your steaks in. How about like finishing trowels? Um, Finish process, if you're doing steps, usually a cove inside and outside cove for the top corners and inside corners. Can you show us each one of these so we the, know uh, what they are? An out, outside cove. This is your inside, your top. Or you can just use, you know, we usually edge everything as long the edges and everything. Um, and then your float, usually your float is what you pour your concrete, float it down, and we have a big, it ain't out here because we don't need to, we have a, a larger, what they call ball float for bigger areas. You know, the smaller, it's for your hand floating is what you usually use when you go to finish it. Right. Um, but you, see, you, you can't actually get to all of it all the time. Right, right. So you need to be doing a large area like that. Sidewalk in April, we'll use a boat float to float all that. Down. You've got your rebar in place. Yep. Do you try to get that rebar off the ground so it's actually in closer to the middle of the concrete when possible? You want to keep it within about two or three inches from the bottom, depending on the thickness of the concrete. And okay. A four inch slab, usually, you know, anywhere you know, about the middle or you know, bottom two inches. Okay. We'll lift this up as we go. You can get chairs, you know, rebar chairs to hold it up, but it's kind of hard to keep them in place. So it's just easy, easy when we're pouring is to lift up the rebar. And again, they're replacing their driveway, so don't worry about that. I was just gonna say, that's gonna kill this driveway. I was just th thinking in my head, Ron, that's gonna kill this driveway. Yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna jump in here because not everyone realizes that a loaded concrete truck on a driveway like this will absolutely crush it into pieces. Now, sometimes you can get away with it, but if you do damage it as the contractor, you are responsible for repairing it, especially if you're directing the concrete truck onto the driveway. You can't put the blame for that onto the concrete truck driver itself. And if you're a homeowner doing this and you just don't know the difference, it's better to be safe than sorry because I have seen entire driveways completely destroyed with one single truck driving on them. So do you have a backup camera on that? Just the mirrors and still, right? I was saying on camera earlier, Concrete truck drivers are crazy. You guys are flipping crazy. <laughs> some of the stuff, stuff, dude. Some of the stuff I've seen you guys do in concrete trucks, I'm like, I'd be scared in a freaking four wheeler. Yeah. And you guys are like, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. You want that truck? Where? Oh, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> so, Alex, Alex, you got volunteered to go into the concrete then with the boots, right? Yeah, okay. This is your first year laboring on concrete crew? Third year. Oh, third year. You get your content over there. So I'm, my okay, job is pretty much just uh, do whatever helps them out. From the top okay. step and then that very, very bottom one. So in this case, right you can actually see where Ron has already set a trough in place for the gutter. Because that'll, this blue thing right here will catch, they're going to put a down spot right there. It'll go across, and then they can get it without running it across the sidewalk. Water on a side, water on concrete like that is. Yeah, you're gonna say, oh, it's concrete, but no. It's, if you can do something like this, your concrete's gonna last longer. I mean, little things make a big difference. Right in here, you can dump it over the green, right? Yeah, right, right in front of it. Go back, go back. All right, you guys, well, this is where we're going to stop today, but don't worry. Tomorrow, we're going to finish this video, so you don't have to wait for part two to come out very long. I'm going to release it right away. Tomorrow, what we're going to end up doing is breaking this process down step by step and clarifying the tools you need, what you have to do with those tools, how you handle them, the entire thing. Right, Kitty? Does that sound like a good game plan? So... Without wasting any more of your time today, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and come back tomorrow because we're going to wrap this project up for you. God bless. Go get them. And do me one last favor. Will you guys please hit the subscribe button and the bell notification? And if you are already subscribed, 
Will you please hit the bell notification because it's the only way you guys will know if I've actually released a new video. That's all I got for you today except for this video here if you check it out and that video there if you check out. And tell me what you think of this video. I want to know what videos I should be trying to make for you guys. God bless and go get them. We'll see you on the next one. Right kitty? Catch you guys later.